sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. It's fine here. Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday the 24th of November 2013. And um, uh, every once in a while, I like to schedule a sort of unscripted, uh, you know, uh, a show that, that may give the appearance of being not particularly well prepared. But <coughs> you'd be amazed how much effort goes into that, frankly. <coughs> you know, it's... Um, shut up, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, let's roll the titles. Something, Something's going on with the software, man. And I don't know what it is. Was happening. And welcome to Dave. How you doing, mate? Not so bad, bonny lad. Yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. The usual sort of chaotic Sunday, which uh, culminates here. I can't. I'll do this show for a rest. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I get that. I yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I so, like I say, I, I, I feign this sort of. Uh, it's an act, really. The you know, looking sort of stressed and, you know, but really, I'm really quite relaxed, totally in control. I'm quite often as relaxed as a newt on a Thursday night. <laughs> I will be. Give me time. Uh, right, tonight, on tonight's show. I'll go full screen for this. Here we go. You may recall that at the beginning of this year, we were starting to get our heads around what the uh, Tobacco Products Directive actually meant or might mean for us. Uh, we didn't like it much. We decided, some of us, that uh, even at that early stage, we were going to go and get on politicians' backs. Now, I'm going to show a VT that I showed back in February, uh, which is kind of uh, me musing on the way to and the way from a visit with my local MP. He's a Conservative MP. Uh, his name is Andrew Brigden. And um, I won't preempt too much in case you've uh, forgotten uh, how that all went. But I came out of there really sort of mulling it over in my head the whole issue. Um, I'm going to play this short VT just to jog everybody's memory and then we're going to go for a little update after that. Right, well, I'm on my way to see my MP and uh, I don't mind admitting I'm a little bit nervous about it. Obviously, I'm going to talk to him about uh, the EU Tobacco Products Directive and specifically the uh, proposed changes that, uh, well, let's face it, most vapors should know about now. Um, but if we take uh, these proposals at face value, then uh, the e-liquid I've got in this e-cig here, I won't be able to use it anymore because it's more than four milligrams uh, per milliliter in strength. This is a 25 milligram, I believe, and I don't want to buy it in one mil vials either. <laughs> and I want to be able to use it on this EVIC. Um, so the purpose of me going to see him is to make sure that he's aware of this, this legislation that, that might happen. And to uh, and convince him if he needs it of why it's a stupid idea and why I think the British government should be opposing it. 
Uh, if I understand the process correctly, our MEPs will get a vote, and I've written to them. Um, but in addition, the uh, UK Health Minister, uh, all of the EU Health Ministers are required to vote on this before it's passed. Um, and I want to make sure that my MP, who happens to be a Conservative MP, but that's not really relevant, I want to make sure he's petitioning the Health Minister um, to oppose this, and, and if not, I want to understand why not, and get in his face a bit about it. Uh, I've no idea, I've sent in some information ahead, some links, um, some information about who I am and what my interest is. But mostly, uh, I'm not going to go in there and pretend to be a scientist or a politician. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to show him some e-cigs. Uh, I've put together a little kit to show him. Right, so what I'm going to take along with me is I'm going to take uh, something that he might recognise as an e-cig. Um, I'm going to take along... the ovali ellipse okay just to demonstrate that they don't have to look like uh cigarettes uh and i'm also putting in some of these sort of hygienic mouthpieces for this so if you i'm not sure if he's a smoker or not but if he wants to go with it i can pop one of these on and say here have a go uh, no idea whether this will be needed <laughs> or, wh or whether he's just going to tell me to clear off um um and then i thought it's probably worth me taking an ego of some description. So uh, I've no idea what brand this is. That could be a Bianchi I missed. Um, I've no idea what that tank is on the top. Apollo. Oh yeah, I got that from uh, Irish Vape Fest, I remember now. Um, so I'll pop that in just to point out that that's, you know, a popular sort of size. Um, and they're going to take this to show them that there's technology involved and uh, why not this is flavor of the minute so I'll take this along too and uh, and show these to him a late addition uh, I'm also going to show um, him a bottle of juice uh, which is chip compliant with the tactile triangle and everything it happens to be a flavor art UK could just as easily have been uh, um, one of the decang bottles for Vapor World there, or decadent vapors. But I want to show him um, that you know that these there are regulations. You know, um, again, might not be relevant, but I think I'm pretty well prepared with that little lot um, to show him some stuff if he's interested. So hopefully that little lot will give him an idea uh, that you know the e-cigs are not some sort of flash in the pan uh, fad uh, and that it's something that we vapors take very seriously um, I'm, clearly I'm not going to take the camera in with me I'm not that brave <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm not sure he would agree to be on camera at this first discussion anyway uh, so uh, when I get there the camera will go off And when I come out, hopefully, I'll be in a position to say that he fully supports us and will recommend to our health minister that we oppose this at the EU. That'd be the ideal outcome from this. Um, so let's see. Well, I'm here. Um, so, uh, let's do this. Well, I'm not totally sure <laughs> how that went, frankly. Um, I... I got the impression that he didn't want to do the detail today so I had a number of prepared things in my head that I wanted to say I wanted to um, I wanted him to understand that um, this is really a big deal uh, 
and I'm not sure if I got that message through. Um, to summarise, I've been asked to put my case and my concerns down in writing and send it to him. Um, his research team seemed more, uh, he had a couple of assistants with him and they did seem a little bit more interested than he was. Um, obviously I haven't collected my thoughts really, I've got straight back in the car here. I don't think it was a total disaster. He basically said that if I assemble everything in writing for him, he will top and tail it, to use his, his words, his expression. Um, and then send it on to the Minister for Health for the UK, uh, who he referred to by first name, uh, which, which may be a good thing. He basically said he's going to support it and register his opposition to it, but <laughs> it, that seemed to be more due to the fact that, in his own words, he was anti-regulation rather than him understanding and appreciating our concerns. Uh, he informed me that he is a traditional smoker, which I thought was a nice choice of words. Uh, I offered to send him an e-cig. He didn't seem that keen. Um, so, to be honest, I'm not actually sure how much impact that has had. He did say, you know, make sure that people, your campaign, as he referred to it, is uh, contacting all MPs and MEPs, and I said, we're doing that. Um, I don't know, maybe, I, th I think I expected a bit more engagement from him. I know they're busy people. Uh, the uh, waiting room was full of his next appointments. Um, but, uh Yeah, I think I, I, I think I um, was expecting a bit more reaction, but he's going to uh, sort of petition the uh, health minister, so uh, not a total disaster. Um, he also complimented me on the area I live in and asked me if I was pro-European. Yeah, it's going to take me a while to mull this one over and decide, I think, whether that was a successful meeting or not. It wasn't a disaster. I got what I wanted. I think I probably should be happy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy enough. Okay, now, for the benefit of those people who are watching this live and joined during that clip, where's your note? <laughs> no, just to uh, explain, that was actually a video uh, that I took uh, visiting my MP back in February of this year. So was that nine months ago? More than that. Nearly ten months ago. And, um, and I, pl I, I watched it back earlier. Uh, because I've been exchanging emails in the last few days with with, with Andrew Brigden, my MP again, and um, I'll, I'll I'll show you the text of 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 what he said back to me this time. And as I came away from there, you could quite clearly see. I mean, that that, that was just off the top of my head as I was driving away from the place, and uh, I, I wasn't really sure. I I, I kind of came to the opinion, to the conclusion which I, I, I actually said on my show that week in February, that I got the feeling he was going to oppose this, but because it was coming from Europe. Not because he gave a toss <laughs> about the subject matter. Um, he was, as I said, a smoker. Um, very, probably still is. <laughs> um, and when I, I said there, when I recorded that, that he didn't seem too keen when I offered to send him an EC. In actual fact, he said, no, don't bother. <laughs> right. uh, he's quite happy being a smoker. Uh, but I've got a feeling, and I had the feeling shortly after the, visiting him, that that, that that was his main reason for uh, paying any credence at all, was the fact that it was being done in Europe and he doesn't like things that are done 
to the UK from Europe. And I suspect that there's rather a lot of MPs who have that opinion. So it's important that we get back in their faces. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to see mine now. Uh, I've just made an appointment to see him again. It's not going to be until the 10th of January. I, I wish it could have been a bit quicker, but that's mostly constraints on my part than his. It has to be said I'm not available to do it until after Christmas. But uh, I shall go and see him, uh, and hopefully uh, there'll still be stuff to uh, to rattle his cage about at that point. Um, but um, I just thought it was it, it, it was interesting looking back at that that, that uh, I'd never heard the term trilogue, but we kind of knew what was what was going on, and uh, even though we had the victory in Brussels in October. Um, in actual fact, not a lot has changed from when I went to see him in February. Except that perhaps I'm a little bit wiser now, a little bit more politically clued up than I was then. I'm certainly not nervous about going to see him a second time and actually banging the table a bit and saying, right, now listen. Uh, so I'm up for that. But there was, there's a couple of other little points that I want to discuss as well. And, uh, you know, um, I make no apology for labouring the point about going to, pardon the pun, about going to see your MP. Um <clears throat> But uh, I will take a short break. Uh, when we come back, uh, Dave and I are going to sort of reflect on what, what has happened and what we need to do next. Because I'm still not convinced that everybody's got the message, frankly. See you in a minute and a half. And welcome back. OK, so, uh, yeah, so that was me going to see my MP. Now, I said uh, the reason that that brought that back to my mind uh, in the last day or two, I just realised I'm sitting, I'll lean over that way a bit. <laughs> I've been moving stuff around and I ran out of time. <laughs> um, yeah, again. Um, uh, the, the, I, I sent him an email. Uh, it was last weekend. It was last Saturday or Sunday. I sent him an email saying, hey, look, a lot has happened. Uh, I sent him links to the SWAF videos. I uh, explained uh, what what a fantastic result it was and a vote for common sense on October the 8th. Um, uh, brought him up to speed and said, I want to come and see you again. Because, uh, and what, what I actually said in my email to him was that the British government seems to be uh, sleepwalking into making an incredibly stupid decision <coughs> based on misinformation. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the reply I got back from him. I'll show you the reply uh, by clicking here. And what this says, um, I can never tell whether this is legible as it goes out, but I'll read it just in case. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Kitson, thanks for your email. I've been following this issue and I have a response that the government are issuing below. <clears throat> I'm just going to interject there because he then tells me when the next surgery is in January and that's when I'm, I'm going to be going. Um, but that is when I first read that I was in Switzerland and I read it on my iPhone and I read it and I thought it, it made my blood boil frankly mm -hmm. <laughs> but then I read it again and it doesn't say this is his response does it it says he's been following it and he has a response that the government are issuing 
Yes. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's the door ajar for discussion. But this is the government response that the Conservative MPs have been fed to feed to people like me. Quote, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, those darlings, the MHRA, which regulates all medicines and medical devices in the UK, has announced that the government will regulate electronic cigarettes and other nicotine-containing products, NCPs, as medicines. The decision was reached following a public consultation and scientific and market research into the safety and quality of these unlicensed products, including how they are used. I think it is important to highlight the conclusions made by the MHRA's expert group, the Commission on Human Medicines. It also found that NCPs currently on the market do not meet appropriate standards of safety, quality and efficacy. It found that the release of nicotine from the same product can vary widely over time and the amount of nicotine per product differs from batch to batch and worryingly toxic elements may be included at unexpectedly high doses which could produce adverse effects particularly in vulnerable patient groups. (coughs) (laughs) You did well to last that long Dad. The MHRA has been clear that the decision to regulate NCPs is aimed at providing a framework that will enable good quality products to be widely available. (laughs) This is not about banning products that some people find useful, but making sure that smokers have an effective alternative to meet their needs. Unquote. And he did very carefully there show the quote marks to show that they're not his words. Mm. So uh, I am interpreting that as uh, him being at least prepared to listen to what I've got to say. Mm -hmm. Um, So I... It's it's regrettable that I can't get to see him before December the 3rd uh, when we know that the trilogue starts to uh, get interesting. Uh, but um, th- that is the official government opinion and their position. It is. Uh, in bed with Labour, you could say. Mm, you could. Um, there's nothing new in there. But that's straight from the MHRA. That's not a government position at all. That's a farmer-funded organisation's position. Ah, well, you see, what you have to bear in mind, of course, is that the government's position is advised to the government by the MHRA. And therefore, when the MHRA says there's nothing we can do because this is the government's position, they're actually just going into little circular arguments because they tell the government what the position ought to be. That's their particular function in this case. So the MHRA is perfectly capable of changing its mind, as is the Department of Health. And they should. Of course. That's not going to happen unless pressure is put on them by MPs. And the MPs aren't going to put pressure on unless we put pressure on the MPs. Absolutely. I mean... We do. Put bluntly, you know... These buggers have got to remember that decisions like this affect who we vote for. Vapors are voters. Indeed. It's um, it's an absolute... Like I say, it made my blood boil because I thought that was his response to me initially. So I've mellowed somewhat because I know the government is largely misinformed and clueless on the matter. But if we all go and see our MP, I mean, I mean, it's worth saying, isn't it? Uh, while we were going through the the EU bit, and we were going up to the uh, plenary vote, yeah. <clears throat> we we'd identified, hadn't we, that basically UKIP, the Lib Dems, and the Tories were our friends in this. Yes, Mostly. you know, there were one or two exceptions either way, but it was Labour that we were targeting and trying to, to trying to have an impact. Mm. Um. If the Conservatives were voting or, or saying they were supporting us purely because they're anti-Europe re- imposing this regulation, you can no longer assume that they are on side. Because I'm sure that many of them, rather than just repeat that government statement, will actually buy into it. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely certain that's the case. I know Martin Callanan, for instance, has been very vocal with his conservative um, colleagues in trying to get them to see the true path, for want of a better phrase. Um, and and he's, he's 
been very vocal in the European Parliament and his, his stance has not shifted. Uh, I'm in contact with his office quite frequently and he is still extremely supportive and trying to get um, the rest of the Conservative Party to see exactly how things ought to be. Um, so, Which is great. But if he can't do it on his own, so again, it needs us as vapors to be talking to our MPs and bringing them up to speed with what has happened, what might happen, and what is potentially on the cards. And it's not all good news. The trialogue says to that. Um, Indeed. The trialogue makes life very difficult in actual fact because it is a negotiation. It's a bit like, I don't know if you watch porn stars, do you, Dave? I do. Well, you know that bit where um, the, the punter says, well, I want $10,000 for this. That's right. And he says, I'll give you 10. <laughs> yes. And then and then it starts. You know, you've got $10,000 here and you've got, what's his name down here at 1000 And then he'll go, well, I might go to 1500 No, I'll go down to nine. Well, I'll, I'll come up to two. Well, I'll come down to eight. And they end up meeting somewhere in the middle. Indeed. That's, that's what's happening in trialogue now. Indeed. Uh, negotiating. And the fact of the matter is, even though Amendment 170 went through with a level of 30 milligrams, we know that the council's stance was two. Indeed. That, that was their well, agreed position. Let, let's just think about that for a second, right? Because as you say, Amendment uh, 170, it said uh, that it was talking about 30 milligram limit. Anything above that would be have to be uh, licensed as a medicine. Yes. Uh, Flavours, we could keep them. Um, and then the original TPD position was four milligram, but no more than two milligrams of it at a time. Is that right? That's it. Yeah, that's, that's right. Exactly yeah. Right. So, and all flavors should be banned. Yes, that was the position. So, um, it's interesting. Just looking back at, at that video I just showed, I, I, I kind of made the comment as I was going around there that that um, uh, I, I, I held up a tank. <laughs> I said, I want to use this device with this juice in it. What I don't want is a little vial, you know, by which I meant a little cartomizer that's regulated with ridiculously low strength. Uh, I, that, that still can't happen, can it? Or can this negotiation change that? Well, the, the, the negotiation can very easily change that. You've got, on, on one side, you've got people who, like us, who have come up with this 30 milligrams, loose juice, everything that we know preserved. That's on the one side. On the other side, in council and commission between them, they're not that far apart. They basically want to see everything that we know and enjoy off the market, controlled as medicines. And as, as you read out um, in that missive from the government, nothing currently on the market would meet the standards for quality and efficacy and, and or anything else. In other words, everything that you know now could be removed. What this negotiation is going to do, potentially, is find some kind of middle ground between the two. But my bet is that both Council and Commission are going to be looking more towards medicinal style regulation than what the European Parliament has decided it wants, which is closer to tobacco regulation. And, yeah. and as we've discussed before, neither one is actually ideal. Neither one. But the fact of the matter is, they are in negotiation. Now, the Council and the European Parliament, the two sides, they're, they're going to be clashing heads a little bit. So what they do then is the Commission steps in to advise and the Presidency steps in to advise. And if the Commission in the guise of the presidency is advising, they're not going to be advising what the European Parliament voted for. They're more likely to bend with the council, if you like. And that's gonna mean that we're likely to see, oh, I don't know, something as daft as 20 milligrams, no loose juice, cartomizers only, pre-filled, um, and God knows how long to get stuff to market because they'll want as close to medicinal notification as they can possibly get. And that's what we've got to fight against. 
So kind of meds and regulation, but by the back door in a way. It's it's meds regs in in everything but name is what it is. That's what I, I mean. Remind remind us which country currently has the presidency. Uh, the, currently, it's Lithuania. That's right. And, and uh, Lithuania, it needs to be recognised, is the only member state that has an outright ban on e-cigs. They are not going to be advising kindly at all. And so it's it. I think it's vitally important that everybody throughout Europe gets back in touch with their MEPs as well as their local representatives, their MPs or uh, I think it's TDs in Ireland and, and, and whatever the title is in any other European country and just remind them, you know, this is, this is not just about us, it's about you, it's every last vapour out there, it's you that's being threatened in this way and I wouldn't put it past the Commission to be gunning for the likes of me and a few other people. That well, I mean, let's be clear. We know what the Commission's position on this is. It was the opening directive proposal, wasn't it? Mm. Which was pretty much to leave bugger all on free sale. Well, that's pretty much the situation, yes. And I think, now that they've had a smacking in the European Parliament, which they did on the 8th of October they're going to be out to exact a little bit of revenge, I would imagine. Uh, save a little bit of credibility. Well, exactly right. And that means that, that as vapors, we've got to be more voluble. We've got to make a lot of noise. The time is now. There's not much time left. It's already been discussed in trialogue. And it'll be discussed again on December the 3rd, and they've all gone away to think about it and stuff like that. Now's the time to get in touch. Now's the time to make your feelings plain. And it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm going to be going down uh, on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock to hand over the Save e seeds letter, uh, hopefully to Jane Ellison MP, the new health minister. It may well be one of her un underlings, but the, the good news is ITV will be there to film it. You know? Yeah. There's, there's, there's an element there where we can put pressure on, but it needs everybody to be talking to their MPs of all colours. And when I say talking to, I mean doing exactly what you did, Dave. Yeah. In yeah. there and taking Kit with you. Just, now, just to, yeah, sorry, I was just going to just, just take the opportunity to remind people that finding your MP is easy. Uh, mm -hmm. While Dave was talking there, I have typed writetothem.com into my browser. I could, uh, if I wanted everybody to know where I lived, I could type my postcode in there <laughs> and click go, and it would give me the name of my elected representatives in the, uh, Parliament and the European Parliament as well, I believe. That's and right. don't, it's good, it's good to uh, to, to send them a letter and, and, and state what you want to state, uh, but it's even better to say, hey, when's your next surgery? Because your MP runs surgeries in your area, you know? Uh, it'll be a bus ride away. Uh, I, I had to drive for 20 minutes in February. This time, it's literally at the end of the road. He moves around. And yeah, he's he literally is. just down the end of the road. Uh, I can walk it in 10 minutes yeah. uh, in January. Unfortunately, I can't get him before December the 3rd, which I would really like to do. Uh, but I'm going to get him anyway, <laughs> just on principle, frankly. Um, You've got to go at any time. At any, any time. I mean, the sooner the better, obviously. Yeah. But if... if if you send an email and you get no joy, ring the constituency office, find out when the next surgery is, and go. A lot Just of people, go. a lot of people will be very daunted. I, I was myself in February, um, but uh, you know, my, my message to, to you would be, don't be, because they really do work for you, not the other way round. Okay, so at very least, they're going to be polite and courteous to you. You know, no, they're not going to laugh at you and say, "Oh, stop wasting my time, get out." Right, go in. Tell them what you think, your story from your heart. Why you think medicines regulation would be a mistake? That's all you've got to do. And if enough people do that, that will filter its way up to the people who are actually going to make decisions and taking part in the negotiations. It's exactly so, right. Yeah, the, I mean, the, 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 don't, the, don't be don't be frightened to do it. Is is my point? The, the just normal people like you and me and everybody else. Um, and every last MP or MEP I've spoken to 
has been just a normal person. You can talk to them, just like the bloke next door or the bloke five doors down. In fact, somebody's going to live five doors down from an MP or an MEP and go out to the pub with them lately. But there is no problem with going to see them. It's a very comfortable experience. They have to make it comfortable for you. They can't denigrate you. They can't bully you. They can't take the mickey out of you. It's against what they are supposed to do. Indeed. They do listen. They may not agree. They may ask questions. Answer them to the best of your ability. Um, the one word, one piece of advice I would give is to use the word substitute rather than anything else. Yeah. That it takes are a substitute for your smoking habit. Tell them that and tell them everything that you've heard from Clive Bates. Tell them everything that you've heard from Jerry Stimson and from all of the other experts that know what they're talking about. That these things represent less than 1% of the risk of smoking with tobacco. But if the MHRA gets its way and if the European Commission gets its way, effectively what you are using now to reduce your risk of COPD lung cancer and everything else down to less than 1% of what it was, if all of that's removed, what are you going to do? There you because go. That's, a, that's effectively what's going to happen if these negotiations go the wrong way. And I have no great confidence at this moment in time that the negotiations will go entirely in our favour. From that point of view, we need to get the odds are pretty much stacked against us. I mean, uh, I mean, we know the UK government position. I just read it out. You know, yeah. we're starting there from zero flexibility. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're all rubbish. We're going to regulate them as medicines, and um, damn yeah. the consequence. That's yeah. the government's position. And to, to everybody, and I've, I've seen on Twitter as well over the last few days, a lot of people railing against cigar lakes, which is why over the last couple of years I was, I've been looking at them a lot. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't like cigar lakes and you do nothing now, that's all you get. You will get cigar lakes that have got virtually no nicotine in them. You will not be able to get loose juice. Everything that you like as a vapor. You've heard it from Jeremy Mean. You've heard Dave read it out. It's going to go if we don't act and act now and loud. And, I, and I, I don't want to rant, but I'm begging everybody, pick up the phone, ring your constituency office and say, look, I'm coming down. When's your next surgery? Make me an appointment. I will be there in spades. Take a couple of friends with you that use e cigs that vape. Get on that and give it a blast because it would appear to me. Do. I mean, I inter one of the things I'm going to say, but this is more because it's in my nature to do it. <laughs> and one of the things I'm going to say to my MP is I'm going to explain to him how throughout my entire, I'm 40, I'll be 46 when I go to Zim, and uh, uh, every election, whether it be a local one or, or, or a government uh, a, 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 a government election, uh, I've always voted based on my principles and I've never voted differently. I'm not going to say who I voted for, but I'm going to look him in the eye this time and I'm going to tell him this time I'm actually taking notice of the way politicians react to me. You know, I was so impressed with the Liberal Democrats. I was really impressed with the Lib Dems and the way that they uh, listened and heard us in Europe. And I shall explain to him that I'm going to be looking to see how uh, my local candidates represent what I want on this matter and let him know that, you know, this is one vote that might be, you know, might be resting on this matter. Because I've got to be honest with you, this is the most important political thing that's going on in my life right now. Mine too. We had a question there from chat from uh, GMFC Fantasy, which is a good name. <laughs> it says okay so when my MP says okay what do you want me to do about it what's the answer you want to go first yeah I'll give it a blast go for um, it. what you want him to do there are, there, there, are, there are three things that you want him to do in the first instance you need him to contact both Jeremy Hunt and Jane Ellison and ask the question why meds why won't you come away from it the second thing you want him to do is to contact his political partner or her political partner in Europe 
the MEP, in other words, for the constituency that you both are in, your MP and you, and get him or her to ensure that his political partner in Europe sees things from the same perspective as you do, that under no circumstances should they agree with anything less than Amendment 170 as and when it comes back from Trilogue, even if that means delaying the Tobacco Products Directive until the next presidency or even the next parliament. And that's important. That's very important. And thirdly, you would like them to ask a question on the floor of the House at either Prime Minister's question time or the Department of Health question time. And they, they each, all of the, the ministers have their own uh, question times in Parliament. And you would like him to put a question, an oral question, on the floor of the House, not just a written question. So it's three things, three things. A written question to the Department of Health, getting in touch with his political ally in the European Parliament, and finally to ask an oral question asking why medregs and opposing medregs on the floor of the House. There's a fourth one if you feel capable of doing it, and that is to ask why the scrutiny committee has not yet looked at all of this, because it's being pushed for, it needs to be looked at, and the scrutiny committee does need to have a look at things. So that's four things, three that's, important that's ones. That's a damn good point, that fourth one as well because I would have missed that, and I'm going to take that one with me. Uh, another question there, just before we take a break, came from Fuzzy Ann saying, you know, can you can a group of people go? Uh, and uh, I, I, I would guess that that's going to depend on your MP. Um, however, if I were wanted to take a group of people, obviously you're all going to have to be his or her constituents. They're not going to uh, sort of allow a coach load to arrive from... Uh, from up north <laughs> to, to, to go, go in and gate crash their surgery but if, <laughs> if, if you are all constituents then the way I would put it to my MPs I have a number of people who live uh, in your constituency have the same issue would you rather would you see us all at the same time or one at a time and I think they'd probably go for the group yes because otherwise they'll be there all day listening to the same argument <laughs> yes. um, so, so, uh, but but I would imagine, and I don't know this, maybe Dave, you, you know better than I do, but I would imagine that that's at their discretion because uh, the room you're meeting in might not be big enough for more than a couple of people. Yes, it, it, so. it largely depends on the size of the room at the surgery and it also depends on how comfortable each individual MP is with it. Um, they would normally prefer to come and meet an organised club, if you like, and speak to an organised club. Um, but two or three people going down, taking a few devices for them to have a look at, they may take it, they may not. It's worthwhile giving it a go. If they say, no, we don't want to see a group, then get everybody to make an appointment on the same day. So that, they, that that's all they've got that day at that surgery is people going to talk about E6s. Yeah. And if they've got to turn people away because they haven't <laughs> got time... They'd that, soon wish they'd seen the group, wouldn't they? <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and it's a damned good message as well that there's lots of people that are concerned about this. Another uh, tactic I intend to uh, to pursue as well is just say, how often do you hold a surgery because I'm coming to everyone? There's, the last time I went to see uh, my MP, <laughs> there was a guy there for his 23rd time. And she was working with him to try and get his particular problem resolved. It was nothing to do with ACIGs or anything like that. It was specific to him, but it was his 23rd time. And seriously, they, they will... They will see you. And I, I have seen people typing in that my MP doesn't see anybody. They have, they to, have don't to, don't they? They, ha they have to. It's your right. They cannot to. not. They can't refuse you. Ring their constituency office. They have to see you. Doesn't matter if they're a minister. Doesn't matter if it's the bloody prime minister. You've still got to have surgeries and see you. Indeed. Uh, I'm just going to take a couple more points from chat and then we'll go into a break. Uh, Gillis is just making a point here which is worth repeating that's one and a half million vapors they tell us uh, the family and friends is a lot of votes uh, yeah it is and they probably don't realize that because that's uh, a separate issue I know but I think a lot of vapors out there don't even know this is going on still so uh, make it your business to let them know if you if you know somebody uh, and the other point, uh, it's just a quick question to me about how long did I get with my MP? It was about 20 minutes in the end. And uh, and to be honest, uh, they didn't exactly chuck me out the door, but, but they were they were urging me to, to wrap up because it might surprise you that I was talking quite a lot. 
because it's, <laughs> it's not like me, I know. But uh, but uh, as I left, the surgery was absolutely full of people, you know, so I, I, I couldn't complain. Uh, they gave me a 20 minute slot and I got my 20 minute slot. And, and like I say, uh, I, I said in the video there, even though I felt my MP was only listening because it might have been a, an excuse to have a pop at Europe, uh, the guys, his assistants, they'd done their research. They'd, they'd printed out pages from the links I'd sent them ahead of time. And of course, we've got a lot more links to send them this time and videos. So, But we need to go into a break. Uh, I think, um, the, 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 you know, last word on that subject, Dave. Just do it. Don't, don't, don't hesitate. Just do it. You cannot make a fool of yourself. You cannot look an idiot. You are just being you. And you, as a vapor, are the most important person in the whole of this debate, argument and negotiation. Never forget that. You are the most important person. Beautifully put. End of part two. of Dave's Tackle Box. Iveber and Iveber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. And welcome back. Right, we're going to lighten it up a bit now, aren't we, Dave? And I'm going to ask the question that everybody in chat is asking, and that is, why are you getting so much vapour from that thing? <laughs> you can blame Cat for that. I, I, I know the answer. I'm speaking sort of, yeah, you know, I'm just being the presenter. <laughs> yes, yesterday or the day before, I, I, I forget which, because both Cat and I have reached that age where we cut up at the drop of a hat. <laughs> she posted a link to a video in our Skype chat that we keep on going to a thing called a tricrocoil, coil, which is, is, is I, you, you'd never have thought of it. I you know never. what? I could probably get that on screen, but uh, it was a bit long. It was 20 odd minutes, wasn't it? It was, it was very long and I sat and watched it and, and the preamble to it, I thought, nah, 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 nah. can't be right. And I thought, I will blow it. Cut's impressed, I'll make one and, and see what happens. So I made a tricro coil, which is, is a strange and weird and wonderful contraption, which I quite possibly will look at either this Thursday or next Thursday and show you how you make it. Um, this thing's got a, a cotton wick, cotton wool wick. Not very much of it. I've got it in the square, and I've also stuck another one into... Um, a dripper, <laughs> me and dripping. Good God! Um, <laughs> Keep and, talking. I'm going to show them the guy's page while I'm there. You do that, um, and this this thing absolutely blisters it out. It whacks it out. It's banging vapor out like nobody's business, and there's a lot of flavour involved as well. Um, you can set the temperature to suit yourself. It sits really well on a wattage controlled mod. Um, I'm I'm running this one at 15 watts. It's the first time I've ever gone this high. And my God, it's gorgeous. 
Um, just so everybody knows, this particular one's running at 1.5 ohms and 4.8 volts to give me the 15 watts. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> It's uh, pretty impressive, that is, mate. Um, yes, well, as, as we came into the show, uh, this room, <laughs> <laughs> like a disco on full afterburner, I'm telling you, it blitzes it out. It's great. I've got one I've got one here I made earlier. I don't know whether... Is that coming up? Hang on. It'll look better if I send you full screen. Hang on one second. There we go. There you go. There are three coils on it. Two little ones. And a slightly bigger one. Yeah. And the slightly bigger one um, has no wick through the centre. Um, seriously, it's worthwhile checking that page out. And, and God, oh, I, it's not its not the simplest thing on the face of the planet to make. And if you're all fingers and thumbs, don't even go there. Uh, but if you can get one made and to fit in the device you're using, my goodness me, what a, a revelation. The guy, the guy there uh, that you can see, uh, with, uh, let's face it, he's sporting a rather impressive beard. That uh, is pretty impressive. Uh, R.I.P. Trippers is the name of his account on uh, YouTube, if you want to look him up. Mm. So, And you'd recommend it then? Uh, pff, what? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. I mean, and, and throat hit, lung hit, everything hit. Everything he says... I, like I said, I was kind of a bit sceptical about the whole thing. Well, what the hell, I'll give it a go anyway. The only downside, if you are, um, how can I put this, frugal or tight in the wallet, is it blasts through juice. Um, I filled this just before the show, and I probably used about two mils. But worse my, worse but, than a Genesis with steel rope? Yes. Wow. Yes, you can almost see the juice going down in the tank. It's gorgeous, though. Fair enough. Okay, right. Well, mostly because I'm jealous, uh, I'm going to move the subject along. Uh, I'm going to ask you because you covered the E mode on Thursday night, I believe. I did. And I, I sadly haven't had a chance to catch up on that show, but I will, did, as I did always it live? do. Didn't even pre record it, did it live? Did it live, did you? Hmm? You devil, you. Um, what did you think? Um, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed by it. I've been using it quite a lot. Um, and it, it handles nicely. My darling wife has one, and getting it out of her hands is all but impossible. She's loving it. Uh, it's producing really well. Um, I've, I've taken the, uh, the opportunity to bung it on the MVR software and uh, changed a few settings around the place so that I've got the, the three um, RVW settings on there, 10, 9.5, and 9 watts. Right. But I'm running this one at, uh, where am I? Where's my little dot? It's running at 9.7 watts with the, the bog standard tank, and uh, it's 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 treating me very nicely, thank you very yeah. much. I mean, I, I, I set mine up uh, on Friday, I think it was, and I've been using it about the house. Uh, it needs a bit of a top-up again. Um, and I quite like it too, but I've noticed something on mine, and that is the, the, the bottom end, where the, where the end cap is, is getting incredibly warm. Is it? Yeah. What's your uh, What's your spring like? Springy. Check your spring and see if it's got a little bit of crud on the top. You'll find it easier to get the cap. I wiped it on my trouser leg, which is all I've ever had. It looks fine. It looks clean and new. And bottom of the back is clean. Yeah, seems to be. And um, it's a, you know not not scarily hot, but quite warm. Warmer than anything else I've got. I'm sucking for Britain at the minute to see if I can get mine to heat up. I've got this set to... Well, I've not yet connected it to MVR, so I'm assuming the little scale that, that around, that's painted around the side of it is accurate, and therefore I'm at 8.4 watts. Mm -hmm. um, it won't turn on now. <laughs> oh, great. Have you buggered it? Yeah, mine's dead. <laughs> I, th I think I think the connection via your spring is possibly not very good. Putting the two little things together, it stands a chance, doesn't it? I suspect that's where the problem is. I shall just uh, unscrew mine, as you do. I also need to find a place that sells buttonless 17670s. 16650s. Is it? 
Yes. Oh, that'll be why the 17670 I had wouldn't go in. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I read the manual, honest. <laughs> yeah, you can get the 16650s from both Totally Wicked and joytech.co.uk. I'm sure I've got something else that takes those. Uh, yeah, it's, it's working now. The, the only other device that I can think of that takes a 16650 that's current is the Janty Mid, which I personally think that the uh, the E mode or E Electron S, as it is from Totally Wicked, that's the, that's the the direct comparison. And I've got to say, um, having pretty good experience of both, I would take the E mode over the Janty Mid every time. The other thing I've noticed with this is I keep pressing the USB rubber instead of the button. <laughs> yes, that doesn't surprise me. I've done the same thing. I can't lie. But anyway, this, this, this beast, is, it's doing the job. Um, I'm going to try taking that on a plane tomorrow because I reckon that tank stands half a chance of retaining its contents. Um, this one did. When we flew of course, back. you took it to Ireland. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, it, 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 it handled the, the journey rather better than I, but then the e mode wasn't drunk. Fair, fair comment. Um, I was going to look at this thing tonight. I'm just going to flick uh, this camera up into my little box. This is this Ego V V3, which you'll remember I picked up at uh, yes. Light Fest, and the manual just flew on the floor there. Uh, this thing is, uh, I did show it briefly last week, it's a variable wattage, variable voltage thing, but an Ego style. Mm. Charges at the bottom. I'm going to have a proper look at it sometime, film a VT, charges with a mini USB. And uh, it's not bad, actually. The form factor's not bad. Um, Been playing with it. Well, there, there's the E-mode next to it. Is it? Yeah. So it's a sort of similar sort of dimension to the E mode, indeed. And uh, but with a very simple interface, uh, it tells you your atomizer resistance and the little window there. If I've got an EVOD here. If I connect it, it sort of lights straight up. Yeah. And it's telling me that's two point three ohms. And now it's telling me I'm using it at eight watts. There you go. Yeah. So it's quite nice. I'll, like I said, I'll have a proper look at it in the future. But I'm thinking of taking this with me as well. I should if I were you. I look forward to seeing your uh, your in-depth view on it. What I do know is the coil on this EVOD is absolutely knackered, and by whacking it up to eight volt, eight watts, not not volts, <laughs> that'd be stupid. But whacking it up to eight watts, uh, it's uh, it's performing again. It's amazing what you can do with a few extra watts. Mm. Like I said, I, I mean. In conversations that we've had before, when we've been talking about the uh, American propensity for high wattage, yes, um, I'm going I'm to be I'm going to be stupid and not thing up as high as it can go. See if we can get it up to twenty watts and see what it does. If it pops, I think we'll go full screen for this. Right, I use up twenty watts. Oh, it's, no, it won't go to twenty. That's asking too much. Try nineteen. No. That'll not have it. 18. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's wanting slightly too much voltage out of it. 17 it is. Yeah, we're away. Mmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> wow! Mm-hmm. Of course, what you want to do there, Dave... You stick mm -hmm. a bit of that 45 milligram bot extra in it. No, I've got 48 milligram caramel leachy in it. <laughs> oh, caramel leachy, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's an acquired taste. <laughs> that's working rather well. It's not doing too badly at all. I'm going to knock it back down now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to 15 watts, I think. Yes, it's good. Well, it's good. we're at the end, you know. Are we? Again. So Chris is about to type credits. Oh, uh, no, what she's actually typed is remember Gary's raffle. <laughs> yes. 
That's two things I forgot tonight. Uh, Gary's raffle. I, I believe the message was, and I did try to confirm it just before I came on air, but uh, I missed the reply, uh, was... I can't find it now. I believe what? tomorrow is the last day, isn't it, for buying raffle tickets for Gary Dibley's... I'm just confirming... Children in Need that's... raffle. Where are we? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, it's scrolled right away back up. It's yeah, oh, here we go. Got it. Final ticket sales. Entry to the raffle closes tomorrow at midday. So if you want uh, to enter Gary's Children in Need raffle and support Children in Need, then get yourself over to UK Vapors. There's a thread there uh, called the Children in Need raffle ticket sales thread, which is very aptly named. Uh, you've got till midday tomorrow if you want to get in there. And the live draw is on the 2nd of December. Is it? See? That's what it says here. Live draw on the 2nd of December, 9 o'clock on TV. There you go. Naked. Which day is that? Uh, oh, don't ask me questions I can't answer. 2nd of December. Just, is it it's it's not my show? Is it? Month, yeah. <laughs> it could be Gary's show to get. I would imagine it would be. If, if he's doing it near, he's not doing it on main. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Uh, and I'm just going to give one last plug just before we play out because it would be wrong not to. It is a Monday, Chris has just confirmed. So that'll be Thank Gary's you. show, 2nd of December. But you've got till midday tomorrow to get to UK Vapors and buy a ticket if you want. I just want to also uh, mention... Um, a little initiative that has, is being run by Scott, a.k.a. DigiSig, who people yes. will know from the uh, forums, the UK forums. Uh, if you go to vivavaping.com, uh, you can follow a link. And Scott is, has set up a, a little uh, raffle under the name of Vapor Aid Philippines Emergency Relief Support, or Vapors for short. Uh, you can donate there and uh, you can win a prize. All the details are on that web page. Uh, you can win a Fugatti Hybrid, which you ain't a bad prize, is it? I would thoroughly recommend that, and a whole bunch of other stuff there. So get yourself over to vivavaping.com and make a donation, and you can be in the raffle for some really good stuff there. There's a Janty Mid, I can see. There's all sorts. Juice, 50 quid vouchers, a Joy e cab as an as yet undisclosed prize from Totally Wicked. There you go. So, uh, I hadn't forgotten that. That was just for dramatic effect. <laughs> We've yeah, seriously yeah. overrun now. We might as well stay. You know, two minutes, 20 minutes. What's the difference? Chris is well, going gonna to get irate. <laughs> we, 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 we could sing. Ah, here she comes. Three minutes over, apparently. Say good night. Dave, say good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next week.